So two common reasons why our kids don't listen or don't cooperate so that you can diagnose what's going on for you and have more options, more insight, more power available to you in those tough moments. It's summer. A lot of you are going to be spending more time with your children, navigating work on top of navigating summer schedules, camps, uh, more family time, more time at home. And so this is a perfectly timed topic for summer. And uh, and I just am excited for you guys to participate with this, ask questions um, as always. Let's have a conversation. All right. So there are two reasons why kids typically do not listen and or cooperate and do what you're asking them to do. And I first want to say that I know how frustrating this can be. It is so frustrating and so maddening when you're trying to do what you think is best for your family, for your children. You, you have a schedule to keep. You have a life to maintain. You have a house to keep clean. You have all of these things, and it can feel so frustrating and helpless when you're trying to get your kid to cooperate, and they just refuse or ignore or blow you off or yeah and later. And I know what it feels like for that frustration to build. And so put yourself in the shoes of a moment that this happened recently. Think about a time when you had a schedule, you had a time you needed to be someplace, you didn't have a buffer, uh, and there was really no wiggle room in your mind. You had to get them together. You had to get someplace. And so you ask them to do one or two steps they needed to do to be able to get where you needed to take them. And instead of saying, oh yeah, got it. Or, you know, yes, mommy, if you have a little one um, going to get their shoes on, if it was an older one, like packing their own stuff for the day, whatever it is. And instead of just doing the thing that you've asked them to do, they, oh yeah, and later. And you know, in your mind, they're gonna forget. That thing is not gonna happen. And now I have to remember, I've got an added thing to my mental to-do list. And now I'm going to have to follow up with them or chase them to do the thing. And now I'm getting annoyed. Now I'm getting, now I'm getting a little irritated. If you would just do the thing when I ask you to do it, then I wouldn't have to, to add it to my list, my mental list and follow up with you. And you know what? You're more than capable of doing this. I've told you before, what is the matter with you? Okay, so here's what's happening. Let's just diagnose what's happening first. The kids are being kids, whether they are four or 14. Your kids are just doing their job of being kids. They are thinking, I can do it when I want to. I can do it in my own time. I don't wanna do that right now. So I'm not gonna do it right now. And now we have a typical parenting moment where you have an agenda and they have their own agenda. And those two agendas are not lining up. They're clashing, right? So what happens in the nitty gritty of the parenting moments? Well, one of two things is going on and why this is kind of a fail when this fails. So first of all, we go into feeling stuck, powerless. We're trying to assign consequences. If you don't do that thing, I'm not gonna take you, parents will say or the activity is off, but what you know in your own mind is, oh my God, that makes my life so much harder. I've got all these things that I was gonna get done when they were gonna go to the thing, and now I'm not gonna get it done. And am I willing to pay the price for you not cooperating with me? I don't know about you guys, but I'm not willing to pay that price. I'm not willing to make my life harder because I don't know how to be creative in the moment and get you to do what you need to do. I just want you to do the thing. Okay, so who's with me? Say yes if you've had a moment like this. Say yes in the chat if you are a mom who has felt stuck, not knowing, you know, like a caged animal. I don't know which way to go here to get out of this without a fight, to get out of this without yelling, without quote unquote punishment, without blowing up or boiling over or yelling at you right? That's where people feel stuck. And that's where people feel helpless in parenting because they just don't know how to get the outcome accomplished 
without going insane, right? Without going nutty, without breaking the connection you have with your child. Making sense so far? Okay, so here's here's what's happening. In that moment, one of two things is happening. One, you have lost your connection with your child. And what that means is you don't really understand what they need, what's going on inside of them and what they want. You don't understand what's really happening for them. So we lose the connection when we're so focused on our own agenda that we don't know what's going on in them. And that happens to most parents who don't really understand the psychology of what's going on for their kids and what their needs and what their agenda are, right? So your kid's gonna have their own agenda. You're gonna have your own agenda. And often as parents, we don't wanna see that. We don't wanna recognize that. We don't wanna leave room for that because here's the, the other reason. We've got our own stuff going on. So you've lost the connection with your kid. I mean, you don't understand what's happening for them. Or number two, you are having your own fears come up, your own doubts, your own uncertainties come up in knowing how to handle a simple parenting interaction like this. How do I get my kid to cooperate and get on board or buy into what's going on without losing my cool? And this is the crux of what creates your relationship with your child. This right here, this parenting moment that happens a million times when kids are in the house with you growing up from zero to 18 or beyond. This moment, this is what makes or breaks your relationship with your kids when they turn 11, 12, 13, 14. And they want to push off of you because it's normal for kids to push off of you. But the kind of connection you have with them, you've got zero to 13 years, zero to 11 years, sometimes zero to eight years to solidify that and to create that solid foundation for the years to come. Because it does get harder. It gets more complex as they get more independent and they cut us less slack. So we better know how to handle that. All right, so I want you to I want you to identify and diagnose for yourself which one do you think it's happening for you most often with your kids? One, do you not understand what's happening with them in them? So you've kind of lost the connection with them and you're pushing your agenda, option A, or option B, you're kind of just fumbling in your own emotions. You kind of can't see the forest for the trees because you have a trauma history because you don't know how to handle anger because you're afraid of of uh, expressing yourself and doing it wrong, or your kid is kind of like a ticking time bomb. You've got one of those big feeling kids with a strong will. And if you don't tiptoe around that, they may explode and your whole day goes sideways. So you're kind of living in that fear and intimidation place of that, either of your own emotions or of theirs. So first one, you're kind of lacking that connection. You're lacking knowing how to leverage with your kid or what's going on with them or two, kind of getting tripped up over the emotional piece. So stuck in that, your own self-doubt, your own fear, fear of them going off, fear of losing it yourself. So you're kind of just in that, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Which one of those? I want you to say it in the, in the comments. I don't see any, I don't see your comments yet. Hopefully, um, if you drop them in now, I can see them. Which one are you getting tripped up in more? So say, if it's the connection piece or if it's the emotional piece, which one does it feel more like for you? Maybe something else too, but often those are two of the biggest pitfalls for parents in these tough moments. So what will happen if you get tripped up in the first category of you've lost the connection to them? Here's what happens. Kids feel not understood. They feel you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. And it can be both, you guys, yeah. Um, she doesn't, she doesn't get me. Kids don't feel seen. They don't feel heard and they don't feel understood. Oops. We've really broken the connection with them. Guess what? We've lost all of our leverage. We've lost the most important piece of leverage we have, which is their trust in us, them feeling loved by us and then feeling our care and our concern. And as a heart based mother, we need them to feel that to be able to get their cooperation and their buy-in and their sign-off on plans we make together, on agreements we make together, no matter the age. Okay. If it's the second one, 
and we're getting tripped up in our own emotional clutter, our own kind of uh, big feelings about why won't you just listen? And why won't you just do what I say? And if you would just listen to me, this would be so much easier. So raise your hand if you've been there before. Everyone here probably has had at least a few moments like that. If that's going on for you, then you have lost the battle already because that will break the connection with your kid. Okay. Sometimes what breaks the connection is I don't understand them. I don't know what to do here. So it's my own like feeling stuck and powerless, but sometimes it's our own unresolved emotional um, patterning, our programming of self-doubt, of uncertainty, of you want to call it dysregulation, but what is that? That's really just like, I don't know how to deal with my own anger because I don't know how to help my kid. And if you're in that place and you don't know how to help the child you have, then that's the next step to learn. How do I help this kid? If you're stuck in the weeds of your own emotions, then that's also your next step. How do I solve? That's the next problem to solve. How do I solve managing and handling my own emotions? Where do I go with that? And those are both problems that we solve in Awakened Motherhood in my signature program. If you're not sure which one you are, then book a motherhood inventory call. It's a 15 minute call and we can identify where's the gap for you. We look at these parenting moments. We look at your own emotional well-being, and we figure out where is the gap that you need to close so I can direct you to a match for that. And, and here's the thing, oftentimes both of those reasons are happening and they can even be happening at the same time. But instead of just kind of going then into powerlessness or hopelessness or despair even about it, or just intense anxiety and blaming yourself, why not solve the problem? This is a solvable problem. And the reason why you need to solve it and you want to solve it now is because you do not want to feel five years from now like you've lost your chance and the window has closed with your daughter or with your kiddo and that they really don't value what you say anymore and that they don't listen to what you say because by the time that happens, it's so much harder to win back their trust. And I'm a mom of two daughters, like so many of you who have, who have kids who are budding tweens and teens in this group. And I know I'm human too. And I know, and I feel the pressure of getting it right now. I do not want to miss the chance to create that incredible depth of connection that I want to last the rest of my life with them. Who here does not want their kid to call them when they're in trouble? Anybody here not want to be that first phone call when your kid is scared or in a place where something weird is going on and they don't feel safe? I want to be that first phone call. I don't want my kids to be intimidated by reaching out to me. I don't want my kids to feel scared to tell me what's really going on. And we have one shot, you guys, at creating that when they're young. And when the window closes, that's it. We've lost that opportunity to really prove to them that we are worthy of being their coach and their guide through these years. And believe me, I know this is not a skill that comes naturally to most people. This is nothing that anyone prepared you for. There is no roadmap that comes with becoming a mom. That anxiety and fear comes in with motherhood. So does your past trauma come in with motherhood. And what you don't feel confident in is going to be shaken. What you don't feel certain of is going to be your wobbly place. Any place that you are lacking confidence, that you are unsure how to support your child, bring it to that call. Book your 15-minute motherhood inventory call. And I'm going to drop the link in here. If you haven't um, had that before, if you haven't worked with me before, this is the perfect place for us to find resources for you and identify what 
what is a match for what's going on for you and your family. And I may refer you out to someone else. I may refer you to one of my free juicy resources, um, or you may be a match for one of my, in one of my offers. And no matter what, I will help you to identify where are you stuck and what's going to help you if you're ready to take some new actions. All right. So um, I want to hear your comments now. I want to hear what piece you're getting stuck in when you watch this back. Where are you getting stuck? What's the, the thing, the main problem that you want to solve now because you don't want to wait until your kid is in a place where they have decided that they are not understood and not seen and not heard. And so they're kind of on their own. And this may be your story. So you get it. And you don't want to be that kind of mom or you want to be a mom that you wish you'd had. All right. Drop in the comments where you get stuck, what is the problem that you want to solve that next problem or the thing that's coming up now um, or the thing that you really want to heal? Let's get the conversation going. I'm here to help you guys. I want to hear where you're stuck. I also am so open to your requests for what else you want to hear more about. And uh, I'll circle back and I'll check the comments for this. And then as always, once you've watched once you have taken in something, drop your takeaways in the comments below so that we can see them. All right. Like this video if it's been helpful for you at all. And, and please do um, let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts when you watch. All right, you guys have a beautiful day, a beautiful summer afternoon, and I'll see you next time.